Hi, thanks for joining me on the Discover Your Life Today YouTube channel. My name is Maveen Cora. I am from discoveryourlifetoday.com. Today I'm going to be talking about how to be people smart and guarantee positive results. You can actually go over to discoveryourlifetoday.com and take a look at um, people smart. So just put that in the search engine and you'll be able to come across this article as well. So this is actually um, an article based on a book I read by Les Gibling. It's called How to Be People Smart. So a great SEO title as well if you're looking for some ideas. Um, but you'd have to add a little bit more to it. Now what he's looking to do in this book is really teach people how to develop the relationships to be people smart with just about every single person out there. You know, if you're looking for ways to uh, communicate and effectively with other people, then being people smart is something that you really need to understand. Being people smart means understanding how people react or will react if you do something or say something, or if you are going to um, give them advice. How are they going to react? What do you what what to do? What kind of body language to have when you're communicating with people? These are all things that you need to keep in mind when you're out there trying to be people smart with people. If you're looking to, for ways to increase and in, in sales and build different relationships, then you, this information here will help you do that. Uh, there's going to be eight different topics that I will be going over. Uh, for some people, this may be a refresher on how to be people smart. For some people, it's going to be a, way, a great way for them to connect with other people, especially if you're in something like sales. Les Gibling's book, How to Be People Smart, walks you through step by step on what you need to do to have positive results with various different personality types. Uh, these results can come back and, and pay you dividends because you're learning how to develop the skills and learning how to work with people uh, continuously. So why are people not people smart? I guess that's a question to answer. There are a few reasons I don't think people are people smart or don't think about being smart with other people. Many times we fail to consider the other person's feelings or perspective. Uh, we all too often are looking for our point of view and trying to get that out on other people. We're really just trying to puke what we know onto other people and really not uh, listening to other people, what they have to say, and even asking questions of what they're saying to understand them more. You know, uh, when you were in school, maybe when you were younger or whatnot, no, no one gave you any formal training on how to be people smart. Even if you went to university or college, there wasn't a lot of um, courses available on this. You had to probably go pick up a book and, and read and apply that information. Maybe you started a job and they taught you a little bit about different personalities and how to talk to people. But many of this was not taught to people and none of these success principles are being taught to people. So you really have to go out of school to learn these things. Things. Uh, so this is another reason I believe people are not as people smart as they could be. So why do you need to be people smart? I think this is an important question to ask as well. Uh, if, you're a pe if you work with people and you're in customer service industry, this is something that you need to be as people smart. Many times we spend a lot of times, uh, time with people developing those kind of relationships. And if you're, if you're just like the average person out there, then you'll know that if you can have develop those relationships, it'll actually make you happier to have those great relationships that are working right for you. Uh, those who know, know how to communicate effectively usually do make more money because they're more confident, they can have more friends, they have security, and they have personal satisfaction in everything they do. So what I'm going to recommend for you is to grab a piece of paper, a pen, maybe open up your Word document, your Evernote, and I'm going to give you eight ways to become more people smart over the next, you know, um, life to, your lifetime realistically based on the principles in Les Gibling's book. So number one, learn how to become people smart is learn how to talk to people. Uh, I think this is the biggest thing we need to do is learn how to communicate effectively with people or learn how to talk to people effectively. When you talk to someone, you have to realize that their knowledge is much different than your knowledge. So cut them slack if they make a mistake and you don't have to always try to correct people. I know this is something that is maybe something I have to work on as well. So sometimes I'm always in that, you know, you said this wrong, you know, this is what you're actually trying to say mode versus, hey, you know what? You said what you said, you're probably right, and let them believe that they're right. And you know, and maybe at another time, correct them instead, instead of right on the spot. Sometimes people don't want to be corrected on the spot. They want just to be heard and what you have to say. 
Uh, you should continue to apply your understanding in a professional manner, but learn to drop your ego, and that's exactly what I'm trying to do. Uh, learn to communicate effectively with the person in front of you because everyone has a different communication style and you need to accommodate for that. So do you want to learn how to make friends right away? I have a simple tip for you and I think you can do it. Here it is. Talk to people about their favorite topic in the whole world. Wondering what that is? It's themselves. You can actually talk to people about themselves, ask them about their homes, political beliefs, sporting events, talk to them about work and business and religion and their behaviors and their beliefs and their family and their travel and their hobbies and they will talk to you about themselves forever. And when you talk to them, they will believe that you are the best listener and the best communicator out there because you gave an opportunity to them to let everything out. Even if there's an uncomfortable dead silence you know, one of the things you can always do with people is just ask them another question about themselves. You know, um, use words like you and yours when you're talking to people instead of I, me, my, or mine. Although these words can be good to use if you're going to be talking about yourself, they do sometimes create a one-sided conversation. So talk in the terms of you and yours versus I and me and mine. Number two. Uh, make people feel important. I think this is super important. Uh, you know, the way people feel about you is uh, going to be if, determined if they want to do business or anything with you. The trick is to have people believe in themselves. Again, people love to talk about themselves. When you let them learn about themselves and let them talk about themselves, they be, begin to believe, like I said, that you're a great conversationalist. And after just a few questions, all you literally have to do is listen to people with your eyes, ears, and your body. Um, this doesn't mean you know talking over people when they're uh, communicating a thought with you. It, all it means is really letting them finish uh, their thought and asking them another question, uh, maybe just to kind of elaborate and find out a little bit more. The more you listen, the more you can actually find out about people and that you can actually find out about what makes them tick and what's, what their beliefs are about. And the more you know about their beliefs, the more, uh, more uh, advantages you have in order, let's say, to close a sale in the future. Number three, agree with people. When you agree with people, you, you, don't, you do not have to just agree with what they're saying, but you, can, you have to find something within what they're saying and find a reason to agree with them. So if they're saying something like, you know, uh, that you completely do not agree with, keep asking questions and find a way to agree with them. That's really what I'm trying to say. When you can agree with people, you build that communication, you build that trust. People do not want to uh, be with people who they do not have anything in common with. And that includes agreements on certain things. You know, when you agree with somebody, it actually feeds their ego and their subconscious mind loves it. In sales, when, you, when someone believes that they are right, they will make go ahead and make that purchase. Your goal is to help the customer make a good decision. Use positive words when you agree with somebody. And another thing you can do is project your voice just a little bit louder so others can hear the positive things that you are saying about the person you are talking to. When other people hear these positive things about the person you're speaking with, the person that you're speaking with just stands a little bit taller, is a little bit more confident in what is being said about them, especially when you use their name. If you are wrong, be the first one to admit it. People like working with people who can admit that they're wrong because they understand that these people do not have an ego. They make mistakes just like everyone else, but they are willing to go ahead and fix this, uh, their mistakes and the situation and understand what it takes to be successful. If you disagree, like I said, you don't have to disagree out loud. You can you know, disagree in silence as well. You don't have to make a point of your disagreements every single time. The next one is learn to influence others. When, <clears throat> excuse me, when you uh, can understand why people make a decision, then learn to influence them on that decision. This is something I learned from car sales. So if someone says, you know, I enjoy a really, I, I love a black car. So that's something that's going to influence their decision. So don't show them a red car when you know a black car is going to influence them, you know, in making that decision. So it's really about understanding people's hot buttons. When you understand their hot buttons, which can range anywhere from money, 
prestige, friendship, ego, security, or anything else that's important to them, you want to focus on that hot button anytime you're making sales or talking to people and working with people. You want to find ways to make people feel important. Okay? People do not always tell you what's important to them in words, but you should watch their actions, watch what they're wearing, driving, look at how they live, and they'll communicate that message through nonverbal cues. In sales, it's an easy thing to do. You just kind of have to keep asking good questions and really watch people's body mannerisms and their facial expressions and their hands and their eyes and their confidence level will show, and you can help you understand how to talk and deal with this customer in front of you. Help people make up their mind. These days, there's so much choice in products and services, it can be very confusing uh, when it comes to making your final choice. If you're in sales, you know it, it can be easy to do to get the person to say yes to you that's in front of you. But you have to ask yes type questions. When you get that person to say yes a few times, they're not saying yes to you, they're really saying yes to themselves subconsciously. Get people in the mood to buy from you and develop the atmosphere, atmosphere where people want to say yes to you. I believe people expect to say yes at the end of a conversation, a sales presentation, or anytime you ask them a yes or no type question. They really do want to say yes to you. You just have to give them a reason to do it. Being people smart is not manipulating people. and It's about guiding people to decisions that they already want to make based on their values, their beliefs, their needs, and their wants. All you're doing is helping them get there faster. Set the mood. Setting the mood can be done in one easy step, but it does require two actions from you. When you meet with people, all you have to do is look them in the eye and smile. Pretty easy, hey? So two simple things that you need to do. Eye contact and smiling. A sincere smile will make a positive mood for everybody. It doesn't cost any money to look someone in the eyes or smile at them, but it can cost you if you don't do it. That means you can lose friends, business, referrals, potentially even your marriage. The next one here is praise and uh, critique people. This is a skill that everyone has to learn and, and should learn how to apply properly. Uh, we all like to be told that we're doing a great job and we all want to be appreciated. This proves that people will continue to do things uh, even when you say kind words to them. People are gonna, you're gonna find reasons to critique people, but you gotta be very smart in how you do this. You have to do it with the right words, the tone, and the heart. Your heart right here. And, and don't do it to hurt people and don't do it out of malice when you're going to critique people. One of the best ways to critique someone is just to help them understand in areas that they can improve. So let them know where they're doing very well and then help them find ways to improve in areas that they're not doing well. If you're going to comment on someone's habits, then provide them a way to improve that as well. Be a uh, or, um, solution oriented person as well. And the last thing here is, I want you to find ways to thank everybody. Two simple words, thank you. These two words can get you bigger results, empower the person that you're talking to, and help people grow in the conversation as well as personally. Don't just say thank you to make people feel good, but really find a reason to say it sincerely and genuinely to people. There are a few ways you can thank people. Uh, walk up to them and say thank you. You can send them a handwritten card. You can reach out by a phone call. You can even take someone out to lunch. Uh, and uh, better yet, thank them in front of their peers. Everybody loves to feel good in front of other people. So these are eight ways that you can go out and uh, become more people smart. And again, like, all these t topics are talked about in Les Gibling's book, How to Be People Smart. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and subscribe. Don't forget to like, like the video as well. Uh, I'd like it if you would go over to discoveryourlifetoday.com and you can go ahead and subscribe to the blog as well. Leave a comment below if you have any questions on this topic or any other topics that you'd like me to cover. Please leave a comment on that. And if I can tell you one last thing, go out and have yourself a wonderful day.